Well, we'll get off on cue tonight at 9 o'clock. We understand that we can dial 1-800-73-QUACK. Uh, That's right. And we can get the weather for tonight. Yes, you can. Uh, what got you into uh, this thing called Quack.com? Well, Quack.com uh, is a really intriguing company, and our, our goal really is to bring some of the power of the web, the, the power of, of bringing information to everyone, to everybody, rather than just the people who have access to a computer. And the way we do that is, is over the phone. So, in other words, I can use the telephone and get the same information that I could get off the web. Why don't I have to have a computer? Well, we think that the computer, the web, um, your normal experience is great for some things, but not so great for others. If you're in your car or walking down the street, it's really hard to log on to your desktop computer, and there's still some information that you really like to get. Where's that restaurant I'm trying to find? What's playing at the movie tonight? Um, what's the weather going to be like, and maybe I should have uh, brought my umbrella? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. And that's the kind of information we're trying to bring out um, to give you access to. So I'm assuming then that uh, Quack.com only has certain amount of bandwidth of information and beyond that it won't help you. No, that's right. We can't send pictures through, the, through, uh, through sound yet, <laughs> but uh, what we try to do is uh, we talk to a lot of people and find out what kind of information they'd like to get. And what is it most people day. want then? Um, I think it really does depend on the different kinds of people you're talking to. We've had a lot of people interested in stocks. It turns out that people are really interested in weather today and tomorrow as they're planning their week. So weather, stocks, uh, you mentioned restaurants earlier, so restaurants, I'm assuming, yes, and right. what else? We have restaurants, movies, we have some lifestyle information that uh, we've had a lot of demand for, uh, such as horoscopes, um, sporting horoscopes. information. Horoscopes? Yes, horoscopes as well. A lot of people call on that every day? It's actually very regular, regular callers for horoscopes. They love horoscopes. <laughs> Can't we get that by dialing up a horoscope on some other toll-free line? You can, absolutely. There are other services for almost all of this. Um, what we try to bring you is a single trusted friend to bring you all this information, and you only have to remember that one number, 873 clock. Now, who are we talking to when we call? Do we get an operator and we say, hi, can you connect me with the weather person? And that person will say, okay, just a minute. That's, a, that's one way you could do it. That's not the way Quack does it. How do you do it? The way we do it is we have some really amazing uh, technology, seven patents pending currently around this, where we, you're actually talking to um, our in-house voice talent, who's had his voice recorded to interact with you about the various topics that you like. His name is Mark, um, and it's Quack's voice. So what you're really talking to is a machine. That's true. That's why we say talk with the Internet, mm -hmm. and it talks back to you. It tells you what you want to know. So I'm talking to a computer. Yes, you are. What about my heavy New Orleans accent? No, it's, it's true. I mean, you'd wonder, and pretty much our service can understand you if, if another person can understand you, and I can understand you just fine. So Quack will have no problem at all with that accent. And it will, how long does it take it to retrieve the information? As long as it takes me at home when I'm trying to, in the middle of the night, pull something down on the, inf on the net? Well, that's, or is it much faster? That's another one of the great advantages of Quack, is that it's much, much faster because it's a machine talking to another machine to get you that information. And we don't have to, you know, wait for all those images to come up. We just get you that one piece of information that you need and we do it very quickly. So, in fact, there's almost no waiting at all. Now, you must have competition. So how do you differ from your competition? We do. There, there, are, there are other competitors, for sure. Um, the way we see it is that we're focusing on bringing you um, a trusted friend out through the phone to you. Others take the, the view that they want to either uh, ask you to pay for the service, which we try to bring you there. We do bring the information entirely free. Um, and other services have uh, interaction that is more, uh, we would call it gimmicky. And we try to be more that trusted friend where we're always there just with a, a quick comment and bring you the information. You said it's free. Yes. The number is toll free. Yes. How does your salary get paid? Right. So what we do is we have a very carefully designed advertising model where there's very short direct advertisements um, that are about five seconds. So you hook me then, huh? I hook you a little bit. Before I get the information, Absolutely. i got to listen to a five minute or ten minute or five, um, five or ten second commercial? Just a five second ad. And we think it's a fair Only trade. five seconds but a five-second ad, sometimes three, sometimes seven, but usually a five-second ad, and we, we feel it's a fair trade uh, for giving you this information for free. What kind of a message will it be? Uh, is it whoever buys the time, they can put anything on there they want to? Well, at Quack, we focus very much on local, on local content, so we're very interested in bringing you the information about New Orleans events, and we, we work very carefully with local providers. So you try to make the commercial break, so to speak, 
wherever I am or whatever the topic is that I'm talking about? Yes, that's right. We try to keep it relevant. Uh, we try very hard to keep it relevant to the topic you're interested in. We might tell you about a new movie, for example. So if I'm asking what the weather is in Fort Lauderdale and I'm sitting in Denver before I go, the message will be about Fort Lauderdale or be about Denver? That's a good question. It might be about an airline deal between Fort Lauderdale and Denver, for example. Okay. And who makes that selection? Who in your company decide uh, who gets the tap on the sh shoulder? To... Uh, in terms of selecting yeah. advertisers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have a, a fairly large advertising channel um, where we uh, go to local businesses and we go to national uh, businesses as well, telling them about our new advertising medium, giving them an opportunity for it. Typical sponsor, how much will they pay? Um, it's really an interesting model, actually, because we have, uh, as opposed to the web model in particular, because we have a channel that's quite directed. I mean, we're talking to you, and you just had a great example. You, you're in Fort Lauderdale, and you want the weather in Denver. Well, there are advertisers who are very interested in, in that kind of traveling mm -hmm. population. So, in fact, our uh, cost per minute is basically a multiple of the web um, cost per impression. Why would, uh, why would a sponsor rather be with you than on the internet? Or do they rather be with you than on the internet? Well, I, think they, I think they do. Um, they do what? Mean rather be with you? <laughs> yeah. They, they would rather be with us. And it's because of, of that directedness. On the internet, uh, people have become very accustomed, actually, to the banner ads. And some of the studies have been really horrific in that people just aren't getting their messages out. Um, because we try to provide a message that's really unobtrusive as much as we can make it. For example, you might really be very interested in that travel deal between those two cities, that um, they see it as a very carefully chosen channel and not the more value to them. The, the dot com on Quack, why did you put that there if you're not really a dot com? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we think of it at, at work, at Quack, we call it Quack, um, Quack.com. We really started out as an information company. We really are. We understand the internet, we understand the web. And we're a group of people in this space, in the dot-com space, who set out to bring the dot-com space out of the dot-com space. Mm -hmm. But hey, our funders are in the dot-com space. Um, and it, you don't feel that it's misleading in some way? Um, if I go to your website sure. and I get uh, quack.com, what will come up on the screen? You'll see quack, the little teeny dot-com. And I think that's the big part of, of quack, is the quack part, not the dot-com. So that's a good, a good point. How'd you come up with quack? Quack's got a bit of a history. Um, we were looking for something to convey the fact that we're interested in, in being a little light. We're, we're not the Wall Street Journal. We're trying to be a friendly, fr friend, kind of memorable name. Mm -hmm. um, and Quack actually has a, a meaning back in the old days of when you sit around and too much caffeine. It actually means quick, universal access to consumer knowledge. And the idea is we're trying to bring all this great consumer knowledge from the web out to you. When you think of... Uh when you think of your competition and what they're doing versus what you're doing, and you mentioned that it's the speed and some other things, how do you as a company want to be positioned on the sidewalk? Do you want to be positioned um, in the tech field or in the information field? Where would people put you? Where would we put, a, put you in a category? We see ourselves as a media, actually. Um, like, like a newspaper, like a magazine? Absolutely. We're another channel for much of that same information. Some of the information you hear on Quack, you could hear on the radio. Some of it you might get from the newspaper, like movie listings. Uh, on the radio, for example, you might get your weather or your stock news. But the nice thing about Quack, you can get it when you want. It's like calling a friend and asking for that information. What is your strategy for getting the analysts, the industry analysts, to look at you in that category instead of lopping you into some other tech area? Well, to a large extent, we are a consumer-driven company, and we aren't that concerned about the analysts. And it's easy to say that, and we're really, we're, we're more concerned about how the customer perceives us. So we want them to perceive us as that friended, as that trusted friend. On the other hand, in the analyst space, um, there's sort of a lean towards the wireless as the coming future. But just as I personally feel that the internet hasn't really been accessible to everyone, there's a large diversity, for example, between uh, income penetration, we want to reach everyone with Quack. So to some extent, we're uh, odds with the analysts here. When we talk about a voice portal, and we talk, you mentioned that we will hear a voice like a human voice coming back to us from the computer. How do you make that computer sound like that? I know you say you have your own in-house talent, right. and I imagine you have a microphone in a studio that you have that person do the recording. Uh, do you find people that will call in and think it's strange talking to a computer? Absolutely. It's a bit of a, a learning curve there for getting used to the idea that you're interacting with the machine. 
I think this is a bit of the wave of the future. You know, it's sort of Star Trek meets the web a little bit here. Um, but we found that we've done a lot of uh, user testing, uh, both out in the field and back in our, in our home office. And people become uh, very quickly acquainted with our, with our voice and with our system. Uh, we're establishing some relationships, actually. It's quite interesting. We all remember how in, right. the, in, the, in, the, in the movie. And then we think of people today that use the internet and chat rooms to overcome their loneliness. And a lot of people use uh, going online and searching the web as a time spender mm -hmm. because there's not much else in their life or they're escaping from something. Um, how much do you, will you run into that people will call and talk to your computer just because they enjoy having something or someone to talk to? That's a really interesting question. Um, I don't think we really know how, how that would happen currently, I and mean, we haven't really thought a lot about that. We've seen ourselves more as interactive radio, less than um, someone who you would actually end up with a very close personal relationship with. But it's true, because we try to bring you this information on a, on a very friendly way that we could establish these relationships. And um, I think from my personal perspective, again, that we would do our best to, to be entrusted with that. Although we have tried to, to support people in their, in their social lives. How many calls way. do you get on a day on average? Right at the moment in mm -hmm. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not New Orleans, right but currently. just with, you're, I'm sure you keep a kind of meter on it. We do. How we many, do. How many uh, calls a day? Well, currently we're receiving several thousand calls during a single day. And what percentage of those calls are repeat? You know, that I've called several times. Yeah, it's, a, it's about um, 7 out of 10. Are seven out of 70 call percent back. then? Yeah. Uh, can I, uh, one of the pieces of literature that I read that I can personalize this in some way. Right. Uh, how do I personalize my, my voice and what I want so it always knows when I'm calling it to give me what I want without telling it? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, we, we try to do things on a permission basis. So if you'd like us to do it, we do it. We don't do it without you asking. So for example, if, excuse me, if you wish, we can recognize your caller ID on your cellular phone, for example, if that's something that you allow. And then when you call back, we know right away it's you. And we can shorten your experience to get right to the mm -hmm. information you need. Another way is that if you found a piece of information, we'll give you an opportunity to say, remember that. And when you say, remember that, we'll put it away. And the next time you call back, if you try to get the same information, we'll give it to you right away. Now, you log all this information. You store it. I'm sure you probably sell it to some of your sponsors, don't you? We don't sell any of the personal information at all. Um, what we use is the information about the things that people are getting to deliver an ad, but not on a personal basis, only on a demographic basis and a geographical basis most frequently. Now, uh, you've got about five or six topic, topical areas now. By the end of the year, how many areas will you be touching by way of information categories? Well, we plan to add two new topical areas every six weeks. So by the end of the year, we should be running around 30, 35 um, areas. And a year from now? Well, we expect to uh, actually accelerate and eventually have one of these things coming out every two weeks. So it could be 100 easily within the next year. Still not as many as I could find on the web. Definitely not. Um, and it's true that we focus on providing the services that our customers demand the most. And we spend some amount of time trying to find those applications that people aren't really sure they might need yet. Um, but no, the truth is that uh, you can only do so many things. and. Uh, we are we're partnering with other companies who are providing services that aren't directly in our space, such as unified messaging. And uh, we'll be doing more of that to bring more services. When you have, uh, do you periodically have a real live human being talk to the people when they call to market research them and to ask them how they're enjoying it? What mechanism do you have to get good feedback marketing-wise from your customers? Right. Well, we have a, a call center that's uh, very active. And if you have a problem in your call at any time during the call, you can say, take me to the call center. And right away, you'll be talking to a Quack representative who will try and help you uh, if you need to get that information. A quack with a yak? A, a, well, you can actually yak with a quack, that's right. Okay. <laughs> or quack with a yak. And <laughs> um, we, we try to find out what the problems are and resolve them, uh, if there were any, or take suggestions. We get a mm -hmm. lot of great suggestions about, hey, I, I really want that new, uh, that new service for phishing. And uh, that's probably the kind of thing you'll see more of from us. What are the things that most people tell you that they would like to see as my way of an information category? Well, we're hearing from a lot of people that they'd like to go shopping over the phone. And they'd like to go shopping while they're out in the stores. They'd like to be able to buy things out there, find out about prices. It's really interesting. Sort of e-commerce take meets the phone.
uh, then you, you will then link them to uh, Banana Republic or link them to Reebok, somebody like that, if we, they ask questions? If we did that, we make it really simple for you, like we try to do in every, every application. And if you decide you want to buy something, you could just tell us and we'd be able to buy it directly for you. Okay. Well, we appreciate your coming by New Orleans this morning. I we hope that, that uh, you'll come back again in a few months and tell us more about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Now, we let okay. Good. Steve, good of you to come by and visit with us here on Midday in Chicago. Thank you for having me. Uh, you represent a company called Quack.com, and it's not a dot-com, I understand. It's really retrieving information off the web but over a telephone. How is that possible? Do you have a lot of people out there at your company? <laughs> That's right. Um, we get that question a lot. People wonder if we have a lot of people out there answering our phone. No, what we have is an 800 number, a uh, toll-free number. It's 800-73-QUACK, uh, and you can call this number, and we, through some great new technology uh, called voice recognition, we understand what you're saying to us, and we can give you information about uh, different kinds of, of information, such as movies and restaurants, uh, from the Internet. It sounds like it's just fluff topics. It's not just fluff topics. Um, we do uh, things to help you in your everyday life, and, and that can be movies or weather or traffic, and a lot of people are very concerned. Now we've got movies, and we've got weather, we've got traffic, and we've got restaurants. Is, is there another category, too, that we're overlooking? That's true. There are other categories, and there's new ones coming every day, actually. Um, right now, for example, there's also uh, stock information um, as well. <laughs> there's... Um, it's okay. Just keep going. Yeah, current. Uh, we have other kinds of personal lifestyle information as well, such as horoscopes. Horoscopes. Yes. Now there's a there's that's really fluff. We got horoscope, we got restaurants, and and weather. Where did you get these topics? Right. So what we've done is we've uh, in in finding the the topics that we're currently using, which are restaurants, movie, horoscopes, stocks, weather, and traffic. Um, we've gone out and talked to a lot of people in Chicago about the kind of information they like to get during their everyday, everyday um, day. And uh, a lot of people are very interested in these ones, and we're always asking our customers what they'd like next, and we're going to bring more and more to help. Uh, and what was number them. one on the survey? Number one on the survey right now is weather. And they want uh, the weather first. People are really interested in the weather in Chicago. And second was what? People love to have stocks. They're very interested in the stocks. Um, really, it's really an interesting thing, because so we try to reach a really broad uh, group of people with our service. Um, and third? It's really hard to say because you're, you're talking to a, a lot of different people, but there's been a lot of demand for movie information lately, and you know we're we're seeing it, it change every day as new people find out about weather, class. stocks, and movies. There's got to be some message in those three topics someplace. Maybe there is. <laughs> now, when they call in, you say they're not talking to people; they're talking to a computer. Uh, that's rather new. How does that work? Yep, it's a new technology uh, that's been coming for a few years, but has really come into its own now. So much like the web came to its own a few years ago, now speech is coming to its own. Um, the way it works is a computer uh, is listening to you when you're talking, and it maps what you're saying to the words, and that lets us find the information that you want. How does it recognize everybody's uh, dialect, but at the same time, the way we pronounce words is not always clear? Uh, some people don't say couldn't, they say couldn't. Yes. And in Brooklyn, it's not bottle, it's bottle. So right. how does it pick up things like that? Well, uh, we work with a company called Speechworks in Boston, and their whole company is based around the idea that you can um, listen to what, how people do um, speak in different parts of the country and build up models of that. And so the nice thing about uh, speech recognition is that the, if you can understand someone speaking in a normal human voice, then the computer can also understand you. Does it take longer to pick up some accents? Yes, it does, sometimes. If, uh, if somebody's maybe mumbling a little bit or uh, hadn't... Uh, hasn't coughed very much today. It might take a little longer. Or they're from Canada and have that Canadian accent. If they have my Canadian accent, it might ask me to repeat myself <laughs> occasionally. But it eventually can do it. Absolutely. And, and we focus very much on having a very usable experience where if there's any trouble at all or, or noise, we, we, we ask you a question. Now, crystal ball the future for me. Where could this technology lead us? Well, I think this whole concept of being able to get information without ever having to go online or go home to go online. Um, could take us uh, just about anywhere. What we've been focusing on at Quack is, is, is an exciting idea that you can go about your own everyday life and get the information that will make your day better mm -hmm. without having to go online. Is, in your dreaming, is there a question that you could ask it that over time it couldn't handle? Or can it get just about anything? Well, I think that uh, over time it could be able to get anything that you, that you can imagine. Um, you've all, we've all seen Star Trek. and. Uh, 
we see this as Star Trek. Star Trek means. Oh, what do you mean Star Trek? We've got to get on a ship and go into space, <laughs> go where no one's gone before. Well, it's just people talking to the computer and it talking. Oh, so talking to the computer voice. portion. Absolutely. So uh, we believe this will take us anywhere we might want to go. Um, human communication has been around for 40,000 years, where people are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. The computer's only been around for 40. We think it can go all the way. Well, we appreciate your being here and hope that you'll come back again. Thank you for having me. And Good. Please, please give our call. Now, what? How many times did you give me the toll-free number? Just twice.